So, uh, good afternoon, ahoy. My name is uh, Marek, and uh, wow, it's great to be here. Thanks for coming out. Uh, it's quite a lot of you. Uh, normally, when I talk to two people, you know, it's, it's good. They're, they're listening. When, when I have a group of five, it's like, all right, now, now, now I'm getting some attention. Ten people start getting a little bit nervous. And, uh, but this, I mean, so many people, a lot smarter, and uh, so many Linux gurus, and, and I'm just a new guy. So uh, uh, I, I, I hope you don't mind. I have this presentation in English. I stutter a little bit, uh, a little bit less. And uh, today I prepared a, a talk, talk for you about uh, 404, and, and it's a little bit of a story, a, a journey of uh, me and, and, and Linux, and, and, and the reason why I'm actually here is, uh, is Linux, yeah? So, so what is my history with Linux? My, my story goes back uh, to Linux, back to mid-90s, when first I get a double uh, Linux uh, distribution CD. I tried installing it on my PC. About a week later, a grand disaster. Uh, I didn't touch Linux for the next 20 years. And uh, about four years back, I got an opportunity to uh, um, uh, use Linux again. I was looking and, and trying to understand what uh, my computer is doing, how it's communicating. I'm a telecommunication guy, so it was interesting for me to see what goes in and out of the network, what goes in and out of my PC. So, so I took the to the ISO, I, I installed it, I, I logged in, I, I got a black terminal screen in, in low resolution, and, and I thought, well, okay, so what do I do? I tried CD, I remembered LS, a little bit later I, I remembered CAT, and in about four hours, the next four hours, I just sat there scratching my head thinking, my gosh, how do I make this work? It, I mean, the black screen, it, it doesn't do anything. The next day, I uh, got my trusted, proven Windows machine. I turned on the browser, I connected to my Linux machine, and, and slowly I started to be able to use the, the applications. Since then, I uh, you know, used it, uh, learned a few lessons. It was very, very tough, very slow. And uh, as a beginner, I started uh, learning about the 404. So what is a 404? Well, 404 is uh, part of the hypertext uh, transfer protocol. So if you're a, a user and, and you want to see a web page, right, you, you click the link, uh, you type in the URL, you press enter. Uh, the HTTP is actually what gets the information from the client, goes over to the server, the server looks for the URL or for the request, and then it sends the message back, it sends the web page back. If everything is okay, you get a status message 200. Uh, successful, uh, maybe the web uh, has moved, so uh, you get a uh, redirect, you get a 301, or, and, and sometimes when the user uh, uh, types in the URL wrong, uh, maybe you get a bad request, forbidden, or 404. So, let's, uh, be before I get into the technical details and, and what I have come to uh, start to play back with, let's uh, go and, and let me give you a little bit of a context. Let me try and frame uh, my evolution uh, and, and my progress with, uh, with Linux. And let's first start talking about the, the black box. Uh, then I'd like to talk a little bit about the metadata. And lastly, uh, for introductions, I'd like to touch upon the uh, content data. So if we look at a black box, let's say this is a black box, right? I, I don't know in principle what, what is inside. I don't know how it works. And, and, and I want to I wanna know how it works, what's inside, so I can scratch it, I can tap it, I can sniff it, I, I can take a hammer to it, and all of these uh, will reveal something. It's going to help me to better understand what the black box, uh, black box is. Uh, it, it, to me, it's, it's, a, it's a method of approaching, analyzing a problem that uh, you don't know what it is, but you want to be able to find out some, some information. Uh, black box, it's uh, uh, terminology, for example, in penetration testing, if, you're, uh, 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 if you don't know anything about the infrastructure, if, you don't, if you're not inside the network, then one of the scenarios is you come in as an outsider and you try and find the, the weak points. You try and find uh, how uh, the infrastructure works. What, what is the actual infrastructure? And in, in many ways, it's, it's, it's a philosophy. So let's take a look if we put the black box in the context of an email. Let 
Now, when you type up an email and then you send it to your friend or your colleague, uh, the minute you press the send button, it basically goes into a black box. You don't, you don't really know how, how it works inside. You don't know if your uh, colleague, friend is on the other side. And the only thing that comes out typically is, is, is you get a response, you get an email back, and, and, and we can consider this a yes, a metadata successful. Typically, when I write emails, I get no responses, so, so I typically get a, get a zero, nothing back. If I send enough emails, then maybe once in a while I get some, some response. Uh, we can also, if we look at, the, before you send out the email, we can see that uh, on the border between, I guess, your email and the, the uh, internet, uh, we can start collecting and then seeing some metadata there. Yes, no, it, it's, it's very primitive, but if you look in more detail, you maybe start noticing some nuances. Maybe you send off an email and you get an uh, email response which is a yes, but the email response is uh, recipient unknown. So that gives you a little bit of insight that, okay, well, this email is not, not functional, and, and then you can start uh, working around it, and, and then you know that email is not going to uh, push you much further. So this is the first principle of looking at a problem and, and slowly trying to get more information by putting in more stuff and seeing what the response comes, uh, comes back. Let's look at the metadata. So metadata can kill you. Wow, that's, that's pretty extreme. Let me, let me explain. Uh, the general on, uh, on the top, uh, I don't know, uh, anybody know the, his name? It, Yes, it's, uh, it's Michael, Michael Hayden. And uh, back uh, during the Bush era, he was in a very tough, sticky situation. He had to stand in front of the Senate. He had to basically tell the world, uh, answer to questions if the US is torturing people. Now, if you can understand that if a, a, a general, I, 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 at that time, I, I believe he was the director of NSA, Later on, he was the uh, director of CIA. So this type of person, I mean, when he's put in a corner and he has to answer very uh, bad questions for, for the American reputation, I mean, you can expect he's going to tell some lies or, or, or maybe do a little bit of mis misleading. So a few years later, uh, he was, had to testify again in front of the Senate, and this time it was on does the government, NSA, collect uh, metadata on, on the American citizens? And again, he misled the, the public, and we all know that later on, Edward Snowden came out and, and he said, well, NSA is collecting all they can, you know, they, 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 they want to get the metadata. And uh, basically, again, he was, it was shown that he was misleading the, the public. But there was another time when Michael Hayden wasn't in the corner. He didn't have to... Uh, say the things that uh, were hurting the, the U.S., and he actually said that we kill people based on metadata. Now, during this instance, he was referring to the drone program, yeah? and he was referring to something that's uh, uh, the use of signals data uh, and signature strikes. Uh, what this means is they were basically in the Middle East monitoring the mobile uh, usage, the mobile data, uh, of different people, and they had some patterns of terrorists. And if a person exhibited the similar uh, metadata patterns, then basically a drone came along, dropped a bomb, got rid of that device. Yeah? Unfortunately, not always did the algorithm get it right. So uh, there's a really good uh, uh, documentary on this uh, by Al Jazeera, uh, known as The World According to AI, which basically describes the whole system where the algorithm takes over, looks at the metadata, and makes decision, uh, complex decisions. So with this, I really want to point out the power and the potential danger of having a lot of metadata go uh, about the world uh, from you. Now, if we take it uh, one level down, um, and we look at big data, for example, Facebook, right? Everybody knows, you know, if you click based on how many clicks you do, they can tell, for example, if you're gay or not, so on and so forth. But there was a good study by uh, Cambridge University uh, that basically examined uh, met, uh, 
uh, psychometrics, which is the measure of uh, top uh, uh, personality traits and uh, basically uh, projecting how you will behave in certain situations. Now, this graph uh, is, is, is really interesting because what they did, they took uh, a group of people, they gave them a bunch of questions on a survey, uh, then they had them click uh, different pictures, whichever one they preferred, and then they made an algorithm, and the question was, can the algorithm predict better the behavior, the personality, than humans? And the result, the first dot that you see, is how well the algorithm predicted the personal traits uh, compared to, for example, work colleagues. So if you have a work colleague, uh, then making 10 clicks, uh, 10 likes, actually can predict better uh, your personality than your work colleague. If you look at friends, uh, it's about 70 clicks that you need before the algorithm can do a better job in predicting if you're, for example, neurotic and, and how quickly you will, you will explode. Uh, you go up the line, and the closest person that uh, 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 is your spouse, your husband, your wife, well, it takes up about 300 clicks where the algorithm can predict how you will behave. So from this perspective, uh, the big data, the metadata, can really tell a lot about you, and, and, and we're not even talking about the content, right? This is only, only the behavior. I, I send an email there, I get a response back, yes, no, that's all it is. So let's look at the content data, right? From metadata, you cannot build a a uh, fusion reactor. For that, you need mathematics, you need diagrams, you need, you need a lot of, uh, lot of content. Um, my personal story is uh, that a uh, few years back, I managed to get on the uh, Chesky Special, the, the Czech uh, uh, plane, and I actually went to, to Calgary with uh, some politicians, some businessmen. I don't know how I got on there. It, it was good fortune. Later on, I find out it did have some impact on my life that I, that I will describe later. And for example, um, I, I discovered that uh, you, can, you can't really see it very well, but there you have, the, at the time, uh, head of the Czech Senate, Mr. Stech. And for example, what surprised me is he has blue shoes, right? Never figured out for him to be a guy who wears blue, blue shoes. In, the, in any case, about two or three weeks after I get back from, from this trip, I, I receive a phishing email. It, I, at the time, I was actually writing the Czech uh, diplomatic attaché in, uh, in Canada. I get an email, it has his name, and it had an email address of one of the colleagues that was on the plane with me. I go, hmm, that's, that's strange, I, I, I report this, I find out somebody broke into the, the business colleagues' uh, email service, they were, they were sending out emails, uh, and, and I was one of the victims, I, I forgot about it, I moved on, and uh, a few months later, about a year later, I uh, took another journey uh, again to Canada on a business mission, this time with uh, Mr. Zauralek, who at the time was the head of uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Now, the, the thing that really struck me is that during the week that I was in Canada, I got another phishing email. Uh, same source, same name, much better. This time on my mobile, I could not detect it so much, but it was really odd that exactly during the times I was with, uh, let's say, the uh, high-profile officials, I was part of the, uh, part of the uh, phishing. Now, we all know that uh, beginning of uh, January 2007, there was big news that the Czech uh, foreign ministry got hacked into. They were watching the emails for, for many months, and uh, they, of course, got Mr. Zahor Alex's email. Luckily, no uh, confidential information was in there. Yes, maybe some sensitive data. Nonetheless, this made me really think about my communication and how to protect my data better. So I started thinking of, where is your data? And your data is, of course, in the cloud nowadays. But what does that mean? In which cloud? Is it uh, with a free, free service provider? Uh, you, you pay for that cloud? Is it somebody you trust, so it's with a, a local ISP? Or, or maybe it's under your bed, 
right? Because you don't trust anybody and you have your cloud uh, in, your, in your premises. And the question also is, how much control do you have over that data? Yeah, so, so can you access the data anytime? And depending on where you have the data, how much control of, of, of the data that you have, then you can also start uh, having more control of, of the metadata. If you have your data with a free service provider, you never see any metadata. If you have the uh, data with yourself or an, uh, a VPS that you rent out, you can get, uh, get the metadata that is related to your server. So this is one of the points I was thinking about. And then I thought about the whole email situation. So when somebody broke into the Ministry of Foreign Affairs email account, well, Basically, the, the data, the storage, uh, maybe it was on their hard drive, maybe it was in a cloud. Nonetheless, uh, the content, the important stuff, was basically being stored and waiting for somebody just to hack into it. And, and the question is, how do I minimize my data leak if I send something confidential? How do I make sure it's not just sitting in somebody's email box waiting for somebody to hack into it, download it, and, and find out exactly what I've been communicating? So basically, what the, uh, after giving it some, some thought, I thought about the black box, and, and I thought, well, if you don't send the critical sensitive information in the email, you just send here, uh, click this link, and, and you can download the document. Well, this is one way to uh, improve the security and to limit the uh, finger or exposure uh, where your documents are. So, so a good example for this is, uh, for example, you send invoices. Instead of sending the invoices an attachment, you send a link, they click on the link, you see they downloaded the invoice, you can take that invoice off of the server. Typically, they don't have the, because they click the link, it's somewhere on the PC, it's not in the email box. So it's one less, uh, let's say, surface, attack surface that's available, one less exposure uh, where, where you don't have uh, the sensitive information uh, included. And basically, uh, I realized that if you do links, and, and maybe if you take off the, the link uh, later on, you see that somebody tried to access it, and, and, and you can look at if this access is legitimate or if this access is uh, um, coming from somewhere where you do not expect, and then you can get some feedback, see if somebody's trying to uh, break into your system, try to hack you. It's a way to basically uh, secure and, and solve some of the problems where you don't have any encryption. You cannot enforce encryption over, uh, over email. So this is, let's say, the, the, the background. So let's look at the, some of the examples of uh, what you can do with 404, uh, how you can detect scanners, how you can detect proxies, how you can, for example, detect unauthorized access. So what, uh, what I did is basically at the bottom of my emails, I started putting a footer. And it's a typical, you know, this email is intended for you and, and not for anybody else, so on and so forth. But on top of it, I basically put uh, two links. In, in this case, we have uh, bot one, and then I put in another link, bot two. Um, you could have some web pages behind there, but you don't necessarily need to. And when you have uh, uh, some scanner that is checking for uh, malicious uh, uh, software behind the links, uh, you, you actually can detect it uh, because uh, the uh, links or the log is triggered at the same time. Yeah? So if I have bot1, bot2, I see first bot1 was read, then bot2, it was read at the same time, and it came from different uh, IP addresses. Well, this is a clearly a scanner, something looking, grabbing my information, checking for it between me and the and destination. And then you can do some investigation. And, and in this case, uh, um, I guess last week, I detected that I sent off an email. The person didn't have anything Google, uh, no domain, Google domain. Nonetheless, I see it's a Google uh, cache. Uh, I, I check uh, where it's coming from. It actually came from two different ISPs. So I can get a little bit better insight of what is happening on the other side. And it's very much uh, simple rules because you know the email bot is going to be more or less triggered simultaneously after you send off the email. You know the timestamps will, will be the same. And it is basically a very easy uh, alerting uh, mechanism. So this is how you can detect, uh, for example, scanners. The next thing I did 
is I put in these uh, little, little source uh, uh, pictures. So how do you detect a, a, a proxy? And maybe I can uh, stop here uh, because I've, I've discovered there's a lot of uh, uh, Gmail proxies out there. So maybe please put your hand up if, you're a, if you regularly use Gmail. Yeah, please put it, put it up. Yeah, maybe, yeah, I, I see over 50% of the population, and I never realized it, actually have Gmail uh, as one of their main platforms where they check, uh, check their email. So, so you, you write your colleague, your business partner to their domain, you think, well, they have nothing to do with Gmail, but when you actually see the log, you see that they're going through, through Gmail. And how can you tell that? Well, because the user agent uh, actually says it. They say it up front. Yeah, I'm um, uh, Google image proxy, and uh, my job is to basically, before you open the email, to check, uh, check the email, get the attachment, uh, download it. So Google, of course, knows your content. They know when you open the email, who you send it to, so on and so forth. But I also know when you open your uh, email uh, or not. Yeah, and how do I know? Well, I don't know if it's a flaw or a feature, but in any case, the way the proxy works is, and then I use here an example with my mom, is if you put in the image source and then you put in some sort of a special tag, well, then you can actually see what, uh, what happens. Here last week, or actually this week, I, I called my mom and I said, hey, did you, did you look at that email? And she, she said, well, I looked at it, but you know, I didn't open it. So, so I was talking to her and uh, I basically, uh, got feedback that you only looked at the preview. Nothing happened. You don't see any log. And then I said, well, can you now open the email? And what happens? Well, she opened the email, 104. I see the first uh, uh, 404. Then we talk a little bit, and I say, well, now reply the email. She did, and voila, I see the next uh, uh, 404. So on reply. Then, then we talk a little bit, and I say, OK, now start typing. Boom, boom. Suddenly more. Uh, more 404s. At the end, I basically say, well, let's, let's close the email, and voila. She closed the email, I get the last 404. What this actually means is, if you see the logs, and if you have an alert there, you could respond to somebody before they actually send you an email. And, and I did this a few months back, where my mom, again, she was, she was in, in Canada, you know, she always complains that you never write me enough. And, and it's true, she never writes me enough either. That's also true. But, you know, I, I was looking, watching my logs, and, and I see four, 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 oh, fours, and I say, oh, she's writing me. So I very quickly hop to the email, I write her missing you, I hope to, hope to see you soon, send it off, and voila, I send the email, you know, before she sends it off to me. She cannot tell me I never write her. Before she does, you know, I got her. So, I mean, interesting, interesting feature of Gmail. So, this is how you can detect a proxy. Let's look how you can, for example, detect uh, uh, intrusion into your email. So again, from, from last week, I, I looked at one of the user agents and I look at it and say, oh, that's odd, Outlook on iOS. You know, that's not, that's not your typical one. So I take a little bit closer look and here you see it's the same IP address. Uh, here I've sent uh, in the past an email to a student. I've sent an email to the teacher. And definitely, uh, these emails should not be opened in the same time. Uh, they should not be opened uh, uh, by the same person because they had nothing to do with them. It was one email, private email to per one person, private email to another person. Nonetheless, in the log, you very clearly see that if you tag the email with a 404, you actually can identify and see somebody's reading emails that should not be reading your emails. So this is uh, one way how you can uh, uh, use, let's say, the 404 to better understand who's looking at your emails, what is happening with your emails, and to improve the security and visibility into the black box of uh, email communication. So, how does that work uh, if we look at the different scams, scam, spams? And uh, I took three examples. Uh, first, I will talk about the spammer who uses uh, free mail, which is Google. Then we can look at the uh, spammer who uses uh, a domain. And then we look at something that popped up to me last week, which is 
in my uh, view, related to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, uh, data leak. So, basically, I, I guess you guys all know this. Uh, I uh, got this email. I got it Friday the 13th, uh, a few weeks back. And, you know, I, I was thinking, what am I going to present with? So, uh, about uh, 10 days later, I decided to respond. And, and here you, you see the typical... You know, the, the, the spammers, they use one email to send off the message, and then they direct you that you should communicate with them on the other, other email. So they use Yahoo and, and Google. If you look into the head of the message, you see, well, yeah, it's, it's Yahoo. Yeah, it's in U.S. Everything looks, looks okay. Um, you do, I double-check the domain. It doesn't exist. doesn't work. I double-check the uh, uh, person. Yeah, he, he's some famous bridge uh, uh, Qatar uh, person, so, so some person exists, but, but I want to validate, I want to find out more information of who's really behind this, uh, this email, where are they spamming me from? Yeah, so I basically replied to both, both emails, and of course the Gmail was active as, as expected. What, what, what I did actually, I asked also myself a question, if I send them a link, will they click on, on the link? And basically what I did is I prepared, um, I can't see it very well, yeah, okay. So I, I prepared a link that basically doesn't do anything. If you press it, it's, uh, it's just a white screen, yeah. Uh, if we look at the, the source code, well, it's just a simple, simple redirect. Yeah, so it's redirecting to itself. It's, it's redirecting every three seconds. So this gives me, they don't see anything, but it gives me a time frame of how long they are on the link. And, and of course, I get the uh, uh, metadata back, uh, and I see where they're, where they're coming from. So I send them basically this, this link. I prepared a little bit of social, social engineering. You know, I thought, hey, are, are they, are they going to when I respond, so it took me 10 days to respond, so I thought, well, you know, it took me a few days, but yeah, it's, it's very interesting, and, and here, here's some information that might be interesting for you, and, and, and I was waiting if they click the link. To my surprise, it took them only three minutes to actually, after 10 days, to click the link. So, wow, you know, this is, this is pretty good. I didn't know the spammers, you know, could, would be clicking the links uh, so much. Uh, what, what I see from the link is, okay, it's coming from Nigeria, it looks like uh, Windows 7, looks like 64-bit uh, uh, AMD, uh, relatively up-to-date uh, browser, uh, uh, Chrome uh, version 7.5. And, and what, what I thought was a little bit funny is, you know, they click on it, 35 seconds, uh, uh, they see a white screen, then two minutes, nothing, then they click on it again, minute and a half, white screen, uh, seven minutes, nothing, again, so one minute, trying to, you know, they, they really tried to see what, what I sent them. Uh, unfortunately, no luck. Here you have actually the, how the log uh, looks. And uh, here, the, 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 there was some, later on, some timestamps. So again, they tried from a little bit different I, uh, IP, same, uh, same ISP. And uh, a few hours later, I think it was like two and a half hours later, I actually get a response back that, you know, they, 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 they <laughs> explain uh, the, the, the percentages and, and how, how they're going to uh, give, me a, give me a loan. So I got, I got uh, this response. And, and this time, well, I thought, well, okay, that first link was, was interesting. So let's see how, how far I can push it. And uh, so I, I ad adopted the, the link. And basically, I send them something. So I send them something like this. It's, it's just a counter. I call it, I call it a two and a half minute show. Yeah. So so it counts up, it speeds up, slows down, gets to ninety percent, then it goes slowly down, then it rushes down to thirty percent, then it goes up, and then gives them an error. So, so I, I thought I was really, I thought I was really pushing it, but uh, so so what what really happened uh, on the other side? Well, I can see the again. Uh, this time, uh, you know, it was two days later, they, 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 this is about the email, they, they clicked on the email, so I get a message, but uh, I see they're coming from, from Nigeria, 
and uh, I see them, how, how, how they click it. So the first thing I guess I saw is the, this time the email, uh, they didn't click on the link first, they actually triggered the source image, so, so I get a request for the image from, from the email, and I can see that in the email they, they were using uh, Windows 10, uh, Edge 12, yeah? Uh, then I see that about 12 minutes later they actually went behind their PC, and this is where they clicked on the link. Uh, again, coming from Nigeria, a little bit different IP address, but same ISP as uh, the two days before. And uh, this time, I see that they use uh, Comet Bird as a, as a, a browser. I, I didn't know it. I looked it up. Uh, I don't know why they use it. But one thing that was interesting is when they click my link, I actually get a refer a message. And here you can see it's coming from Google. Here's my, uh, my, uh, the link I've, I've sent them, them. And then this was a little bit strange. I look at this, and I say, hmm, what is this? So when I put this in, in the search engine, I see this is typically associated with some sort of a login. Yeah? So if you have this, this string and, and, and then some long, long key, you see that it's some sort of a login application. And then I look at this, this long string. Well, wow, that's, that's a nice fingerprint. Yeah? I bet you that's a unique number. Yeah? Maybe this first part, maybe that's not so random, but definitely this is going to be random. And, and here I have some tangible, uh, tangible data that if I actually knew who the uh, guy on the other side was, um, maybe we find uh, this somewhere in the cache. So this was uh, basically the, the first information. But then they were playing with the link about seven minutes. So, so I see them click on it. They, it ran for the two and a half minutes. Then, then they click on it again. And then, then I see them, they click. While the, first, the second one was running, they, they run it a third time. And uh, I actually start each time, they, they use a different platform. So the first one was Bird. Second time, they use Chrome. Third time, they use Internet Explorer. The, the Internet Explorer, it, it seemed like it was really loaded up with some, some plugins. So, so they use you know, Media Center. Uh, they, they use InfoPath. I don't know what this uh, Windows security licensing is, but I mean, this is part of the user agent I get, uh, I get back. Uh, of course, as mentioned before, uh, the first time they looked in, I see the uh, Windows 10 Edge, and then I also see that basically they finished off the communication with uh, Gmail proxy. So, so I get a number of signals. Nonetheless, there was one consistent thing, again, all coming out from, from Nigeria. Hmm. So this helps me to pinpoint and get a better visibility of what is happening on the other side. So this is the example of the spammer from, from Freemail. Then I looked in my mailbox, and also on Friday the 13th, I received to a different email address, yeah? and this is uh, contact us, which is on my web page. The first email is the email that I used only during the uh, time that I traveled with um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs when I was in Canada. Yeah, it was a very specific email. It wasn't very public, so it's, it's not very well known. Well, after today, it maybe will be a little bit more known. Uh, but this time, this is totally different, because here we have actual a uh, domain. Uh, so, so it's not somebody hiding behind free email. It's somebody who, who took the effort to, to set up a server and, and to try and do phishing from, from a domain. If, if I investigate it, I can see the uh, information. I see where it's coming from. So it's uh, ISPs from US. I see that this is some sort of a hosting company. Uh, uh, when I send emails to both, I see that this mailbox was full. So uh, the intended email that I was supposed to write to was, was working. If I check, try and check the uh, domain, this domain, uh, and I look in the registry, I see a very nice thing, you know, GDPR masked. So, I mean, they uh, try to hide now behind GDPR before they have to find a uh, service that doesn't, you don't have to tell your uh, information. Uh, you can also see that they have an email or a telephone number that's from uh, uh, United Arab Emirates, so, so they took some, some effort, but I didn't check that. And uh, so, this is uh, this is the email, and again, I sent the same link as before, and I wanted to see what, uh, what happens. Well, this time, it was a little bit different. It took him about seven hours before uh, I saw them trigger the email uh, 404. Then about half a day later, uh, I actually see them click on the link, and if I look at the IP addresses, it's actually fitting. It's, it's, it's coming from uh, United Arab Emirates. Uh, and then I see, okay, they triggered it again, and then throughout the day, actually for the next three days, I see 
relatively frequent triggering of uh, the uh, 404 uh, email uh, image that they tried to reload it. They were accessing it through, uh, through, uh, through their email. Uh, what I found out is they were relatively consistent, so uh, they used uh, Windows 10 with uh, Edge 44 in the refer policy. I mean, I, you can see what, uh, uh, where the web uh, email server is, so, so you can log in, you can verify that uh, they don't have it encrypted, it's on NGX, you know, you can fool around with, uh, with that and, and see if you can uh, you know, send, them, send them a nice, nice email or something. And then uh, I also, in the response email, uh, they, they send me some additional information. And this time, they've sent actually a, a, a more uh, interesting link, so uh, more valid. So it's brokers instead of broke LLC. So when I look at this uh, domain, I see, okay, well, it's registered to some lawyer in Nigeria. Uh, hmm, okay, it's hosted in the US, but when you look at the website of, uh, of the hosting company, it is a service for Nigeria. We're the fastest ISP in Nigeria. If you go to the webpage, you actually see they were a little bit sloppy, so instead of having two N's, they have two M's. So again, you can see it's a, it's a clear fake. But what caught my attention here is uh, the timestamps, because they had a really leaky email. Yeah, and, and if I looked at the, the log, and then I said, so when do they sleep, when is it quiet? I actually find out that it's quiet time, our time between five and, and 11 o'clock. So if I look at the time zone and I say, well, these guys probably have to sleep sometime, when do they sleep? And I look on the map, well, I see it's somewhere above Russia and China. What does that mean? Hmm, interesting. So, so this is the, 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 the second, uh, second example, and then, uh, actually, last, last Thursday, I got this, uh, this email. Again, uh, Mr. Timmerman, uh, and uh, again, he has an investment opportunity. What was different about this email is that when I looked at, they actually gave me a CC, and when I looked at the, the names, it was the people who went with Mr. Zawar Alec and me to Canada. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. Then I check, and, and this is maybe a third type, so, so they use a service a Proton email. I don't know if anybody knows it, but if you look, you know, it's some Swiss-based uh, service, it's fully encrypted, you know, they keep you anonymous. Uh, if somebody tries to get the data, well, it's the Swiss laws, it's, it's going to be very difficult. So, I mean, they, it's a different way of, of hiding your, your identity. And, um, so anyway, so I, 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 I send them the email, you know, it's, all, it's been all structured, prepared, and uh, they, they respond in 35 minutes, relatively, relatively quick. Then I see that about three and a half hours later, they clicked on the link. Hmm, interesting. Nigeria. What's up with Nigeria? Then uh, if you look at the uh, browser, well, the browser is as generic as you can have it. Yeah, I don't know if you ever use Tor, uh, I, I like to sometimes use Tails, and, and if you look at what uh, uh, signature you get from Tails, it's, it's basically this, except instead of version Firefox 7.0, it uses Firefox 6. So this tells me these guys are, are you know, really trying to hide their, hide their identity. But what I did not expect is for them to have a leak, you know, a few hours later, where I see, again, they accessed it from Nigeria, uh, it's coming from the, uh, from the email, and this time they actually send me what the device they're, they're using, yeah? the mobile device. It's a Linux, it's an Android. This is interesting, Infinix X623. Well, if you Google this, uh, this mobile, again, you see this is a very common mobile in Nigeria or South, South Africa. Uh, so, hmm, interesting. Uh, track back to, to Nigeria. So, what can we learn from uh, and with 404? Well, there's a, there's a few lessons to be taken away. You can, you can learn and you can verify the authenticity of the other side. Uh, you find out that spammers like to click on links. Yeah, I, I mean, I was really nice, you know, it was just a white screen or, or just some countdown count up, but I mean, this way, you can really fight back. You can put in some, some interesting web page, and when I know, you could probably send them some attachments, and they open it, and you know, you, you can get to a lot more information. Another thing that I find out is, well, spammers, they leak a lot of data, yeah? and they don't even know it. 
I mean, it's about the mobile device. Why do they use their mobile to, because it's not a secure device. I think we, we, all, we all know it. So, you know, for my conclusion is, what's up with Nigeria? Thank you very much. So, I don't know if anybody has any, any questions, any comments. It, it's, it's very easy. So, uh, you don't have automatically uh, upload the picture when, when somebody sends it to you. Yeah? It, it, it's a common marketing practice, you get an email, they have a lot of different pictures, they have a tag on those pictures. So if you have automated, uh, load up the pictures, then you, you're, you're leaking. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, this, that's the first thing. Second thing is minimize your, um, let's say, email usage on your mobile phone. Yeah, so, so I, you know, I've, I've been sending emails and, and if I send it to some government agencies, I see Good, they're protected, they're not uploading the links. You know, Nick says it, never uh, get a uh, 404 back. Uh, but there's a weakness because once in a while, somebody uses an iPhone, and iPhones are great. I mean, they're so convenient, you know, they want to make everything so nice and give you all the pictures, all the graphics, uh, but they also leak a lot of information. They, they, they communicate it, so minimize your, uh, your uh, mobile usage, yeah? So I think this is, this is the two main points is turn off automatic uh, reading of emails and don't use your mobile so much for, for emails or have it limited, yeah? Yeah, yeah, so, so it's, uh, maybe I didn't explain it uh, 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 enough, but, but it's basically having a server and uh, basically have them communicate with your server. You have a elementary basic uh, server log and, and, and you can make some analysis, you can run scripts over it, yeah, so. Uh, actually, I can show it here. Uh, I, st I, started, uh, I started putting in three images, and then you can play, play around with it. So the, this first one is just a, it's just a real image. I upload it into, into the email, and uh, when I get an email back, I see if uh, on the way there and back, if the uh, attachment, if it's stripped and thrown away. Yeah? This uh, middle one, well, that's, that's a pure 404. That one doesn't exist. Yeah? So that can be anything, and then you just tag it. Maybe you put on the, the date. Uh, of when you send out the email, date and time. And this third one, well, I, I, I thought, well, we might as well send them an image. So instead of just sending them a 404, they can all, uh, also upload the image. And again, you can tag that, and then you get a little bit of, uh, uh, let's say, duplicity verification, because typically both of these will be triggered. One is 404, one is a 200, yeah? Very, very simple, you know, it's, it's for the guy who's starting out, doesn't really have to do much, yet you can actually find out a lot about the infrastructure, find out where they are, see what is on the path, you know, is, is somebody scanning it, and uh, you, can, you can get some insights, some alerts, so you really look at the logs and, and see what sort of a scanner or, or what sort of a security device is on the other side. No, this, this trick, I would say, uh, it, it, it depends on who you send it to and uh, uh, how you use it. So, uh, for example, I had a, a small presentation of, of about 20, 20 people. They, 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 they never saw me. And, and uh, two days before, I said, you know, I look forward to the presentation. Uh, here, here's the link. And uh, in that case, I got uh, something like 98% 
success rate. Yeah, everybody clicked on the link, and and I could see everybody who who connected. On the other hand, uh, uh, not everybody is is going opening the email, so maybe they only see it in the preview, and and then they erase it. Some people have it turned off somewhere; it's behind a firewall. So here, the um, basically the protection is don't open the the images uh, uh, unless you really want to know what uh, what that special picture picture is. Yeah, I mean the the next step of this is you could uh, uh, tag tag the image. So so I can imagine if if somebody's trying to uh, scam spam me, you know, you send them a nice picture. Yeah, I'm a nice a nice blonde, and and inside you 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 put some sort of a special tag, and 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 then they download it, and and now you know that. Only that image has that special tag, yeah. So I mean, there's a few things you can grow and and do with uh, with this. So one one two more questions. Oh. Uh, yes, uh, sort of. Uh, it depends on with with who. Yeah. So um, I I send out a few few emails. You know, I, I do try to do a little bit of automation. It's not fully automated, but there's a semi automation. And uh, for example, what I saw is I, I send out a bunch of emails. Uh, I, I I see that you know in the log there there's a lot of response. So so I see, I see a lot of traffic coming coming back at me, and then suddenly bang, you know it it it, it goes down. And uh, this uh, actually uh, revealed that Google put my email in, in a uh, spam list, yeah? So, I mean, Google uh, AI is pretty good, yeah? A few people put you in as a spam, you know? Then, then the next person who opens their Gmail, you're already in, in the spam. So, there is a certain way to, to detect, yeah? And, and it's just a matter of how many 404s you send, yeah? So, you can only find out so much from the first email. Yeah, but I mean, if 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 I was continuing the conversation with uh, uh, this proxy of Nigeria, yeah, then then I would get some really good uh, insight of uh, what how they work. Good, and maybe time for a last question then. Good. So, thank you. Thank you very much.